want to talk a little bit about using standard dimmer switches in lamps, uh, custom lamps, steampunk lamps. This dimmer switch will work for incandescent bulbs, anything up to 600 watts. And what I found is you can use these standard dimmer switches and put them into a different form factor that gives them that cool effect. Today, I'm going to be mounting this dimmer switch inside this old oxygen regulator. Picked this up uh, secondhand somewhere, probably paid a couple bucks for it. What I will do is in the lamp, the lamp will be made substantially a pipe. And I'll have a T coming out of the pipe and then mount this thing kind of separate, kind of front and center. And then this screw knob will be the dimmer switch. I'll be mounting these guts in here. So there's a couple of considerations, and uh, let me tear this apart, and we'll go into it. So here is where the magic is made at. This piece here is a standard variable resistor. The unit uses pulse width modulation to control the brightness, which is basically to say that it's chopping the current on and off thousands of times per second and this variable resistor controls how often it should chop the current on and off. The more the current's left on, the brighter the bulb will glow. The longer the delay in between pulses of electricity, the dimmer the bulb will glow. This piece here is what's actually doing that work. This little transistor, this little piece of electronic gear is what's turning on and off thousands of times per second. One of the byproducts of that is that it produces some heat. So they have, I just drilled out this rivet, but they have riveted this piece to this aluminum plate. And the aluminum plate is acting as a heat radiator to transfer the heat away from this device into the aluminum to radiate it out into the room. So one of the things that we need to take into account is we need to have some kind of a heat sink to attach this piece to so that it will be able to successfully radiate its heat away. Note that this is not a live electrical current piece. This aluminum is never, never has any voltage potential. So we can safely attach this transistor to the frame of the lamp without causing any danger. Speaking of danger, the, you know, the one thing we need to be absolutely certain of is that none of our 110 volt connections are in contact with any metal part of the frame. In fact, not only should they not be in contact, you, you know, you say, well, wrap it in black tape or some kind of a thing. Not only should they not be in contact, there really needs to be an air gap for it to, um, black tape degrades over the course of just uh, two or three years, 10 years at, at for certain. So you can't be trusting something like black tape down the road Hopefully this cool lamp that we're going to make is going to be around for, well, let's face it, generations. So this has to be actually insulated by air. So I'm not going to do, I'm not going to cram it in here in any way that's going to risk insulation breaking down later and the thing becoming a fire hazard. I want my great grandkids to see it. I don't want it to fry them, you know? So what I'm going to be doing next is getting this aluminum piece removed from the equation get the variable resistor out of it and get the transistor detached. Pull them to the open position and there we go. So when we're done we need this surface of this transistor to be uptight against some kind of a decent sized metal heat sink and then we need our action of whatever our control is going to be. In this case, our control is going to be this knob. Now, I kind of started working on this probably a year ago, and I haven't gotten back around to it. But one of the things I've done is I have opened this up, I've removed its guts so that it's just an empty chamber. And then I have also removed this and soldered in a little copper paddle. The point of the copper paddle, I think you can figure out, is that when I mount the thing up, 
the copper will be in this orientation so that it can turn the knob for us. So all I need to do is get this piece to be up inside this chamber at the correct distance where this can reach it and have the heat sink. What I will do is I'll uh, kind of document which leads are going to the transistor and I'll clip it loose and then I will mount the heat sink somewhere here on a very nice flat surface. I'll even use some silicone uh, thermal paste to make sure I'm getting a good connection and mount that and then just run uh, short wires from there to there and then I think we will probably pot this in epoxy. Uh, I think JB Weld would work great for that. I'll look up if the JB Weld putty uh, conducts electricity. I'm pretty sure it does not. So I could actually just mount that stuff all in, you know, inside that potting. And it will hold it in place for us and make it safe all at the same time. All right, so I'm going to be mounting the transistor right there. We've got a nice flat surface lots of surface contact as I say I'll use thermal paste and we'll get a real good heat transfer there to this huge brass heat sink so that'll be fun it worked absolutely like a charm so now I need to find a 632 screw and some thermal paste and attach that all right, today is tomorrow, and so yesterday I finished up, I potted the bottom surface of this. These are, uh, this connection here is 120 volts. I potted this with JB Weld, which is an insulator. I'm going to be setting it in here using the JB Putty, JB Steel Stick, I guess it's called. Uh, and I'm, I haven't been able to determine if that's truly an insulator or not, but I know that JB Weld is. So having covered everything that's electrically live that's going to be in contact with the base, uh, having covered that with JB Weld and then add a layer of JB Steel Stick, I feel good about it. You saw where we attached this transistor right here to this metal that's going to be a heat sink. I have also gone back and added longer feed wires because this thing's going to be in the middle of a fairly long run of pipe. It's going to be acting as the switch for a lamp. So I needed longer feed wires. These are out of a, uh, a street light. They're a nice heavy gauge. They're good, you know, solid insulation. So that will be quite safe and quite acceptable. And then I've extended out each of the points that will be attached to the transistor. The other thing I've done is I've taken a digital caliper and using the probe end of it I have measured the size of this interior chamber while the thing is all closed up and made a drawing of what I found. The takeaway is that with the dimmer sitting in here and the height that it's going to be that I need the length of this you know control twister tool needs to be 1.007 inches from the very tip and as it turns out that's like right square in the middle of it so that's going to be just right the next thing I will do is I will solder the wires from the variable resistor back down into the transistor and I will give it a test that a lamp lights when switched through here and I will test the case and everything for any kind of voltage potential. After a successful test of confirming that the thing is going to work in this new wiring configuration, the next thing to do is to go ahead and use some JB steel stick to pot the thing down into place. Another thing I did is I made this little alignment tool on the lathe. It's just a shaft with a 236 hole drilled here. This shaft is 235. And so it fits the shaft, you know, nice and clean. And after I have the potting compound applied, I'll actually screw the lid on a little bit and poke this down in there and engage the shaft here to confirm that I have it in the center and I have it in good alignment so that later on I won't have problems with this thing engaging properly 
it will be lined up in the center of the hole and it will be straight with the axis of the hole. Alright, so here's our mixed up putty. Alright, so let's see if we can get this to at least start. It seems like it's kind of engaging those tabs in there. If I have to, we'll just set it on here square. Yeah, it's hitting those wires. There we go. Now it's at least started. And I can see the shaft down in there. So now let's see if we can engage it. There it is. The guy at the YouTube channel Project Farm said that this T-Rex duct tape is the best. And so I went and bought some. And I'm no connoisseur of duct tape, although I ought to be as much as I've used it over the years. But I'm inclined to think that he's onto something. It's good stuff. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of nicely aligned with room around the shaft and all three dimensions are all around all sides. All right, so there is a look at it after the putty has set and the wiring is attached. The wires are all quite stable. They're not at all floppy none of that's going to move around in there and none of it's going to hit any case however these veins inside here are hitting right here on this variable resistor so i've got to mount it mounted up in the lathe i'm going to use a boring bar and clean those veins out of there so that they're not hitting anymore so that's all set now the last thing is that I need this to spin in this shaft without screwing in or out because if it screws in and out then it's going to be hitting the shaft on the way in and out so that's not going to work. So what I have to do is I have to have a slip fit in here and a way to capture it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bore out this hole, sleeve it, you know, bush it, and then turn this piece down so that it's a slip fit into this new smaller hole here and then once it's in place I will I'll also drill through the side and while it's in place I will drill it a little bit with the drill bit to mark the shaft where it's at and then I can put a groove in this shaft at that location that will capture it so it can't come in and out. I just bored these threads out with a half inch drill bit it left a little bit it didn't quite clean up but that'll be fine and then I have turned this piece of aluminum, just a scrap piece of aluminum, turned it down to a snug fit in the hole. And then I'm about to drill the inside of this out to about 360, which is, uh, turns out to be 23 64ths. And then this piece of aluminum will be a bushing. So now this, this bushing will press fit down into there. Alright, so there it is. The bushing is set. I had to push it pretty hard with the vise to get it down in there so it's not going anywhere. So now all I have to do is turn this piece down to be able to slide into that bushing cleanly. So I'm having to do kind of a crazy configuration here to clear clear this twirling handle. So I center drilled this just a little bit so that I can support it on a center out here. And then I have it gripped by that little shoulder in there. And then 
I will measure the place and then plunge cut and turn it down to the 356 that we're going for. The right hand profile tool has us finished from about here over. Now we have to go from there in. Clearance is clearance. I'm using the stop. Make sure I don't hit the chuck. Three sixty-six. About six more thousandths. All right. So as of now, it works. And it slides in and engages the slot down inside there. I don't think you can see it. It engages the slot of the dimmer and operates it. So the only trick now is to retain it. Underneath here, I'll drill a hole all the way up through the housing, through the bushing, and I'll have this in place so that I can see where it gets engaged and then I will put a ring on this at that location so that a dog screw that screws up in there can go into the slot and retain it from falling out. I'm just going to use a brass flathead and I will clip this screw off at the correct length so that I can bear down the head against that casing and it'll be tight against the casing and be engaging the slot the appropriate amount. Here are the two drill marks where I drilled in. So what I want is I want a slot that begins, I want a slot that begins here and travels around and ends there. I don't want to remove that piece of metal because that's the stop that will prevent you from damaging the dimmer by twisting this thing too hard. I don't really have a way uh, without doing some kind of a big fixture in the mill to, to leave that. So what I've done is I've center punched it so that I can come back and locate this spot later and I will put a slot in the entire thing and then I will drill and uh, tap this and insert a little brass screw in that location and clip it off, uh, file it off flush. So I will actually cut the thing out and then put it back using a brass screw. So you can see here how I have used the disc sander could have set it up in some kind of a collet in the lathe, but I just used the disc sander to grind that screw down to a dog point that will engage that slot. And I have the length just right, that when you screw it all the way in, that it just pokes into the cylinder in order to engage the slot. I'll try screwing it in. If it is hitting too hard then I'll just put a washer under the head and that'll back it off a smidge. Here is a view of it before final assembly. Uh, there's the groove right here is where I drilled give or take halfway through tapped it for 632 screwed in a 632 brass screw and then filed it back smooth and then here is the final retainer screw. As it turns out I did need a washer so to put everything together so you drop it in once you tighten the screw up a little bit it engages in the slot and starts retaining the T-handle and have it about where you can tighten it up and it turns with very little resistance and turns through its full rotation. 
For the final function test, I have a regular electrical outlet, regular incandescent bulb. So all we have to do is make a circuit. All right, making my triumphant return wire nut in tow. Slip a little something on there, both to insulate it and to capture it. Okay, now where were we? Yes, so we were going to feed this side to the neutral. The small side, if, if your wiring is correct, the small side is always hot. So there is the neutral plugged in. Here comes the hot plugged in. It works dim, bright, extremely bright, super bright, dim down, and click says we're off. Voila. One dimmer installed inside an unusual uh, steampunk industrial design kind of container. And thanks for watching.